Hi everybody and welcome to Get Indie Gaming. Today we're taking our monthly look into the finest indie games seeking funding via Kickstarter. Coming up with a stunning pixel art offering, a game having a second crack at seeking such support and also one for Dead Space and Bloodborne fans. Before we take a look into our picks for April, let's spend a few moments looking into how the games we featured back in March did against their goals. Well, in summary, it saw the fewest games from our top fives being funded since our coverage began, with only one of the games seeing enough interested parties parting with their cash. Phantom Halls, One Night and Tala all fell short, while BDSM had their campaign suspended due to what seems likely to have been a clash with the Kickstarter Terms of Service. The team behind and this one have suggested they were looking to move towards another fundraising site, although more recently they've abandoned such plans and hoped to raise enough money via pre-orders. On the other hand, Iron Harvest romped over the finish line having taken over $1.3 million, with an additional 200000 in donations coming from their website. Since it's closed, backers have been given a demo and at first glance its look and gameplay are certainly encouraging. Having been through the games from March, let's get on with the games we're keen to show off for this April. Let's begin this month with Dolman from the team at Massive Work Studio that's looking to deliver a Soulsborne inspired cosmic horror action RPG. Looking for 90,000 US dollars to help them finish off the game. If successfully funded, it's coming to the PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox towards the end of next year. In perhaps a nod to Dead Space and a few notable others, the game will offer players an over the shoulder viewpoint and utilizes projectile based combat. Players will need to scavenge for material to craft their weapons, and unlike Dead Space, there's also an option for melee equipment. Having played the available demo, which is available for any backers who've pledged $10 or more, the game thus far seems to be shaping up rather nicely. The gameplay elements will be familiar to those many fans of Bloodborne, as you can get ahead by adopting a similar playstyle by changing and shifting your combat tactics to suit the given situation. With support coming in from industry heavy hitters such as PC Gamer and IGN, the team will also benefit benefit if successful with a partnership from Square Enix, who of course know a few things about bringing such games to market. We're really rather keen on the online co-op and PvP modes that will certainly add a further depth to the title. As this video airs, there's a little over two weeks to go in this campaign, with the team having just over a third of the required money in the pot. Here's hoping this one can make it over the finish line. Looking for and having already well surpassed its 5,000 US dollar target, Monster's Crown is evidently a mashup mix of Monster Rancher and Pokemon, where this monster breeding game is set to offer more than 200 monsters to breed, battle, and collect. There's also what the devs are calling the ability to create countless other monsters by combining whatever parts you feel appropriate. Naturally enough, you'll be able to bring your creations into the game's turn based battle system while also being able to trade and battle with them via the online player systems. Such creations will have their own appearance, colour, moves all inherited from their parents. And of course they'll be yours to name. In development since February 2016, Monster Crown is tentatively slated to launch onto the PC, Switch and Vita in Q1 of next year. Rewards include the usual soundtrack offerings, t-shirts, the game of course right up to $5,000 or more where you're able to design your own monster that will be featured in the game. While we've never been huge fans of such games in the past, we are keen to get hold of Monster Crown and get started breeding these little critters. Backers are able to get their hands on a demo of this today for the PC, so if you do go ahead and put your money into the pot, please let us know how you get on. Having failed in a previous funding round via FIG last year, The Good Life is back for another go and this time is seeking a little over 630,000 US dollars. Described as an RPG set within a rural English town called Rainy Woods, players will assume the role of a photographer called Naomi who's moved to the town debt ridden from New York and soon discovers the residents can turn into cats and dogs during the night. On the gameplay side of things, Naomi will use her skills as a photojournalist to 
take pictures and then sell them via her in-game smartphone app or via a local newspaper to help raise the funds needed to pay off those debts. There's also opportunities to raise some extra cash on the side in minigames, such as delivering milk, sheep shearing and even an opportunity to mine some cryptocurrency. How very of the time. The Good Life is said to be offering a fully open world experience featuring a complete day-night cycle and will come to the PC and PlayStation 4 if funded towards the end of next year. Pledge levels go from a single dollar up to 10,000, with the team also looking at a physical copy for people pledging $130 and above. Physical copies do tend to draw out the collectors, so that's a smart move from the team right there. Today, as we record this episode, the campaign is just about halfway there, and while The Good Life has seen plenty of coverage from high-profile media outlets such as Polygon, Destructoid, and IGN, it doesn't seem to have taken to the hearts, minds, and wallets of gamers as perhaps we thought it might. Here's wishing the team behind The Good Life all the best in the time it's got left before it closes on May the 5th. April's runner-up has been on our wish list for a while and we're delighted to be able to showcase it here today. Escape Dude Land is shaping up to be a fast-paced 2D arcade style platformer with a hand-drawn art style that's set within a charmingly bizarre world of sketches and doodles. With a goal of a reasonably modest eight or so thousand US dollars, you play as one of the doodlers, an inhabitant of Dude Land who has escaped from the clutches of a merciless monster that's attacked your land and likes nothing more than making snap and treats of your fellow doodlers. With much of the game's single player already complete, save a little bit of polishing here and there, the funds gathered if successful will help the developers complete their soundtrack and multiplayer mode, which on paper looks rather wonderful. With local couch co-op and online matchmaking, you'll do battle with your friends and strangers alike, where your doodler's skills can be used to make your playthrough easier and your opponents that much harder. In a slightly silly way that seems to fit snugly with the overall tone encompassing absurdity with diversity, the doodlers will run, jump, fly, swim and fight each other as they make their way across the levels. The doodlers are also blessed, or perhaps cursed, with something we'll call a gastric issue that they can use to their benefits via a similar method to that of skunks, while also using such gases and a source of combustion to aid their progression forwards. Stretch goals include additional languages, enhanced soundscaping together with ports onto the PlayStation 4 and the Switch. All things being well, the developers hope to have this one shipping towards the middle of the year. This one finishes on May 20th and with a quarter of the funds in the bag, there's still plenty of time to see the money come in to reach their goals. And so we make it to the number one for April. Looking for 29,000 US dollars, we have Feyland, a Metroidvania action adventure RPG that's to be delivered within what appears to be a stunningly produced pixel art and package that's inspired by the classics of the 8-bit era of gaming. Currently in development for the PC and all of this generation's consoles, it has an expected release date towards the end of next year. What's very much drawn us to this game in placing it at this month's number one is straight up how it looks. While in the past we've been a tad sniffy on some pixel creations, the animations and graphics on display here are industry leading. We're also huge fans of how the design has been made to look suitably 8-bit retro, and yet the imagery and techniques used within are very much from the modern game era and can be seen in the character animations, how they walk, how they stand, how their cape bellows in the wind, and how they often converse with you and others. See also the flickering flames in the dungeons, the design atmosphere in the taverns, and the details of each of the bosses. On paper and screen thus far, it's all stunningly beautiful. Rewards include the usual thanks in the credits to art posters, t-shirts, a full-colour art book inspired by the game development, with the top-end backers being able to design an NPC, right up to a three-day, two-night trip to Miami to meet the team. That will cost you a cool $2,000 for the privilege. While as we record this video, the campaign has only been running for a few days, so far the number of backers and money already raised means we suspect Phelan's fundraiser will be successful and we're certainly proud to be backers of this one with our hard-earned cash. As we alluded to earlier, we're hopeful the games featured today have more success than the ones from our previous Kickstarter video. As always, with any campaign on this site, if you do plan on backing a project, please be aware of the associated risks. After all, such campaigns can and do go south from time to time for any number of reasons. And with that friendly note, it's time to say cheerio for today. Many thanks for dropping by, and look forward to seeing you all again here soon for yet more indie game videos.